and welcome to Qatar 365, the show that brings you the most compelling stories from Doha and beyond. I'm Miranda Ratti and on this episode, we're looking at the future of film. Coming up, we hit the red carpet at the Ajial Film Festival. Check out a TV set in the desert and meet up and coming filmmakers in the country. Magic. For the ninth year in a row, the country is celebrating the best local and regional movies and documentaries at the Ajial Film Festival held here in the cultural village Katara. Due to COVID-19, the event again returns in a hybrid format with a mixture of online and in-person screenings. And there's still plenty to inspire film enthusiasts of all ages. From dramas to adventure and even horror, there's a diverse array of films and topics at AGM. Oscar-winning director Asghar Fahadi's A Hero opens the festival. In my opinion, he's the best writer globally. I learned many things from him, more than cinema, art and acting, because of his uh, moral values and Six. On the program are 85 productions from 44 countries. 31 of those are full-length feature films, while 54 are shorts of 18 minutes and under. 22 are by Arab filmmakers from across the region, and overall, almost one-third of the total films available to watch have been directed by women. My film is a personal story that is about um, me trying to process this continuous phase of generational uprooting through a connection that I tried to make with my grandfather over a letter that I wrote to him. The Made in Qatar section highlights homegrown talent, like Khalifa Al Thani, whose short film Border is set in a dystopian future. The story of the protagonist uh, happens to many people. Uh, whether it's uh, male or female. Um, but uh, he goes through these different obstacles and we kind of see from his point of view um, what this world looks like in the future, given that the circumstances that, and the obstacles that we have now in the world. What makes this festival so unusual are the jurors, who range in age from eight to 25. Here in different regions, I just see heartfelt movies, like simple movies. And it's, even though it's simple, it doesn't mean it's not a great movie. It, like, it doesn't have to have all these uh, visual effects to be an amazing movie. I think it's uh, a great way to kind of uh, express art, you know? And uh, I just love the cinematography and the acting. I think it's just such a beautiful way to express it. Qatar's film industry is still relatively young, but by capitalizing on that youthful energy via both the filmmakers and jurors, the Ajial Film Festival reveals a blossoming scene that's continuing to evolve. The Doha Film Institute, which runs Ajial, has made its name as a hub for nurturing young talent and cinematic voices from Doha and around the world. I sat down with the CEO, Fatima Awramehi, to discuss the ways in which the film industry has changed over the past decade, especially when it comes to women filmmakers. We've seen how some started as jurors and then they became filmmakers and then they come back to the festival to show their films. So that's for us a perfect scenario where they've taken everything they uh, can from the festival, they've polished their skills over the year with the different programs that we offer, educational program and development programs and funding programs, and they came back in the festival to showcase their film to the, to the same audiences that they were before. And after the festival, they also go around the world to show their films. Why did you decide to focus on young people as jurors for the festival? So it was really important as an establishing industry in Qatar to focus on the young generation because they will be the backbone of the, the industry in the future. And we cannot uh, move forward without having them having their support as filmmakers, but also as audiences in the future. You cannot build one side of the industry without the other 
important side, which is the audience. We all depend on each other. And just on a personal note, what does the film industry here in Qatar mean to you? Well, you know, the changing of the mindset over the, the years is this one of the greatest achievements, I think, that we've been able to do to, to harness this trust and respect of the community here in Doha, but also internationally, and put Qatar on the map when it comes to the film industry and the independent film industry. That's one of our greatest achievements, uh, you know, funding and supporting more than 650 films over the last uh, uh, 10 years and uh, uh, re-establishing the golden age of cinema of the Arab world again. It's a dream and it's a passion, and to be able to do it on reality is a great privilege. And we all know that we have a big responsibility ahead of us. So I'm very ho hopeful and, uh, and excited for the years to come in the Qatari industry. We're now in the desert area of Brook, also known as the Crete Peninsula, over an hour's drive from Doha and near the sea. If it looks like a scene from a movie, that's because it pretty much was, as Shahrazad Ghaffour found out. Film City was especially built for an Arabic television series. And this unusual rock formation is an attraction nearby in a place known as Mystery Village. This is where the neighboring tribe lived in the regionally award-winning Ale of the Eve. Directly translated, the title is Sons of the Eve, a family name. We left the stone walls of Mystery Village to visit Film City with two of the cast members. As they reminisced about their time working on the show 21 years ago when it was first built for the series. I'm happy because still this village is here. It's alive, we can visit it. I know that a lot of people came to this area, you know, to see this village, to see all this, because this reminds them to our history. You know, if you see all these buildings, because actually we didn't live with this atmosphere, but our uh, fathers, our grandfathers, you know, they built the same as this village. You have taken me back to the past. In every corner there are memories and I am taken back to things that happened to us. I mean, for example, this house is full of memories. The sitting room we are in has many memories. The outside door, the castle door. The area surrounding Film City is now a nature reserve for animals protected by a team of environmental specialists using the location as their base. I hope to maintain our history and preserve our heritage for the next generation and the generations after that. But for filmmakers based in the country or visiting the area, Film City still provides inspiration. first media museum in the region, an interactive exhibition space incorporating the latest digital technology to help nurture a generation of innovative filmmakers. Based here at Northwestern University in Qatar, it's one of many spaces dedicated to motivating new movie makers. From practice sessions behind the camera to getting comfortable in front of the lens. Students here get the hands-on experience they need to hone their skills. I'm learning mainly about how to direct my actors, how to ensure to direct the camera, lights and sound. And um, yeah, when it comes to editing, especially the course that I'm taking now, it really does help me knowing um, how to manage continuity, how to manage um, you know, when I'm going to cut on set. Industry professionals share their knowledge and expertise. Like award-winning director, Professor Joao Caroga, who encourages his students to create films with a message and to be unafraid to challenge the status quo. As a filmmaker, I intercept gender and race. And form-wise, I enjoy to blur the lines between fiction and non-fiction. My latest film, Digging for Life, tells the story of a man who finds himself trapped digging for diamonds in Angola. I often tell my students, be brave. Be bold, be your authentic self. And all the students bring their own fresh outlook to the world of film. I think it's all about 
being part within an Arab community specifically, being part of this region, I think it's so inspiring to see my friends, my colleagues, just to create the movies that they want to tell that they have never seen. So that just in turn inspires me to create movies, more movies like that. Nadia Al-Kata thinks that people might be surprised by the number of female filmmakers starting to emerge in the region. She's working on her second short film in close collaboration with established producer Justin Kramer. Most of the filmmakers here in Qatar are actually women and so just having a female perspective um, on things just gives you a completely different structure to the way that a story is told from a very basic level. I mean, a lot of the main characters are, are women. I think over time they're starting to find their voices here and really understand that their perspectives and their stories are unique. And I think that that only helps the industry because these are stories that no one knows. I mean, we see that there's a sense of humor, we see that there's a darkness at times, and there's social issues that they want to talk about, but now I think the creative aspect of it is really starting to shine. And with stories that connect identity, history and culture, the work of young filmmakers here in Qatar is certainly worth watching. It's been great to find out just how much is going on here when it comes to the film industry. And traditional movie theatres like this one offer the chance to sit back and enjoy a film in comfort and style. And on that note... That's all we have time for on this episode. But if you have any questions, just reach out via our hashtag, Qatar365. Thanks for watching. Do check out Euronews.com for more. And join us again next time. <laughs>